Hi everyone, Joe for Jaspi's Hobby Man here doing uh, three personal boxes of Star Wars Evolution for Prestige World. He decides to, uh, choosing from my poor artwork here, he decides to choose the blaster, the X-Wing down here, and the Millennium Falcon right there, which you can tell it's a Millennium Falcon obviously because of the, it, it looks like a bad like cake or something like that. Anyway, thanks to Prestige World for getting in on this action. All right, let's uh, get that taken care of. All right, so here we go. Do I have a knife here? I don't even know where my breaking knife is. I think I left it at home. All right, let's do the X-Wing first. I think it's in the car. I don't even remember what's in here. All right, so three boxes of evolutions. Let's see what's in here. We've got trading cards, blah, 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 Star Wars, this and that. Two hits per box. Oh, gotcha. So we're looking for autographs, sketch cards, and patch cards. 24. Okay, cool. All right. So, Curtis, thanks for grabbing these on jazbeeshobbyland.com. Curtis looking for short prints and lenticulars. You'll have to tell me what the short prints are. I don't think I remember them offhand. Folks, if you are interested in personal boxes, email us at jazbeeshobbyland at gmail.com. Uh, let us know what your budget is. Let us know what kind of products you're looking for specifically. And then we'll see if we have any of those available. Star Wars wise, this is pretty much all we have. I think we have some Series 2 laying around, but this is pretty evolution and Series 2 is pretty much what, what we have. I don't think we have any other uh, non-sports stuff. I'm trying to think what else we have. I mean, to be honest with you, we don't really have too many personal boxes available. However, we do have some, so if you're interested. Oh, they're labeled SP on the back. I see. All right. Yeah, and so after we do some Topps Star Wars Evolution, uh, we can do some Topps Triple Threads Baseball. Just off camera, we were talking a little bit about um, talking a little bit about. Uh, uh, triple Threads Baseball and where the Kevin Costner from Bull Durham autograph goes and that'll go to the Atlanta Braves. The Bull, Durham Bulls were a Atlanta Braves farm team for a very long time and especially during uh, during the movie, at the time of the movie so that's what we did that. Tim Langston saying in the YouTube stream, Tin Cup is nearly the same movie as Bull Durham. Is it really? I think Bull Durham is great. I haven't seen Tim Cup in a while though. I heard Tim Cup's pretty good. I remember it being pretty good. All right, here we go. Here's box one. So there's Luke Skywalker just chilling there on an island by himself. Oh, yeah. So, so they kind of go through all of the films there, even even the uh, animated series, which is really underrated if you, guys are, if you guys are Star Wars fans. There's a 45 out of 50 Princess Leia. Are you number two? No, you're not. Obi-Wan Kenobi, got a purple parallel there. I don't think I remember this at all. Crimson Empire. No, I don't remember this at all. This must, must be from, from like the video games or something like that. I don't, do not remember that. There's Ray. Oh, from the comics, I see. I don't, re I don't remember this at all. Did they ever? I, can, I don't even remember those. There's an autograph coming up. Kylo Ren, R2-D2. We've got Darth Vader's lightsaber. Nice. TIE Fighter. There's Mon Mothra. Many Bothans died to bring us this information. Remember that? 
Not sure when Natalie Portman was ever in a Star Wars movie. I don't ever remember those. <laughs> when did those come out? Your autograph is Taylor Gray as Ezra Bridger. There you go. Taylor Gray as Ezra Bridger. Yeah, I, I don't remember... I don't remember uh, Christian Haydenson or Natalie Portman in any Star Wars movie. Or Ewan McGregor. That's kind of weird, isn't it? When did they ever do those? Ah, Doanawanga. <laughs> Bib 14. Sorry, that's, that's cracks. Then when, when, when did this ever happen? I've never seen these. Those don't exist. I can't really tell if which ones are which one of these are numbered or not. I don't remember any of these too. What? When did these happen? I pretend those prequels didn't exist, ladies and gentlemen. That's the joke. Yeah. That's little Bubba Fett. Clone Trooper. I'll probably, Ewan McGregor probably was was one of the best uh, probably was one of the best um, parts of the of the prequels. The prequels are otherwise generally pretty awful. The animated series, though, really good. I remember when the prequels. Uh, I remember when the prequels came out. I was just like, oh man, Liam Neeson, Hugh McGregor, Natalie Portman. What could go wrong? What could go wrong? There's the Resistance, commemorative flag patch. Nice. It's out of 170. Well, I don't think anyone actually knew Kira Knightley was in there until like after the films were released and when she did like Bend It Like Beckham. Apparently they... Uh, Keira Knightley was like one of the, one of the uh, maidens, I guess. And um, I guess when they were in full makeup, the old story is that the parents of Keira Knightley and Natalie Portman couldn't tell them apart. All right, so those are your hits from the first box. Let's go with the blaster box. <laughs> yeah, those are the... F All of those are forgotten Star Wars movies, right? <laughs> Pretend like they never happened. I know, I know. <laughs> my, my, my joke, whenever I'm doing Star Wars breaks, my joke is always, oh yeah, they should really make, they should really make uh, prequels of these Star Wars movies. How awesome would that be? You know? I'd be like, they should totally do prequels of the movies. That'd be a great idea. Doesn't everyone want to know what happened before Darth Vader, how Darth Vader became Darth Vader? Doesn't everybody want to know that? No way you can screw that up. Yeah, I, I think the best versions of, of the original Star Wars trilogy has to be the THX, the non-special edition THX versions. So where you get the updated uh, sound and picture, you get the TX, THX treatment, but you don't get all of the added special edition stuff uh, that comes from, that, you know, with like Hayden Christensen added in to the end as a, as a force ghost and all that other BS. Um, or the Laserdisc versions. If you can get the Laserdisc versions and you can kind of get them onto, convert them to DVD, that's a pretty good one. Or the the old special THX special edition or non-special edition VHS versions, I believe, are the ones that you want to get too. And with there, I still I still think you can see like the old uh, the old um, whatchamacallit. The Cantina scene has like the weird wolf in there that's actually re-revealed in uh, The Force Awakens. So Han shooting first, correct?
this is almost as bad as uh i don't think i it was almost that all those trains were almost as bad as remember in et when the when they're uh when the kids fly over the cops right in et if you watch the new versions they're all they're all holding walkie talkies in the original version they're holding uh shotguns but spielberg took it out so spielberg and lucas are both like revisionist revisionist history dudes like just stop tinkering leave it alone <laughs> leave britney alone <laughs> If any of these are numbered or not, Curtis, I'm just going through these. <laughs> I'm a human and my name is Anakin. God, that kid was terrible too. I'm sorry, Lloyd or whatever that kid's name was. Although if you talk to if you talk to uh, if you talk to kids who grew up oh nice. So there's Ahsoka. Ten out of fifty, not bad. I like that. So if you talk, although if you talk to kids who are who are on the who are of a certain generation where the the prequels are the movies they saw first, um, they do have they do have a strong nostalgia for the original for the original uh, or for the for one two for episode one two and three. I blame their parents, if that's the case. They should have shown them the original trilogy first. Nien Num. Flag patch for the resistance. There's R2-D2. Yeah, right next to your beta, Max, says Adam Wolf, the laser discs. Nice Darth Maul. He, I gotta say, he was pretty cool in Phantom Menace. And nice, Jack Claff as John D. Brannon. Two out of ten on that autograph. Nice. And many Bothans died to, to bring us that information. Although that's not the plot of uh that's not the plot of Rogue One. I believe that's or is it? No, because many Bothans died in I think Return of the Jedi to bring those plans. Or was it No, I'm just they're all mixed it's all mixed up in my head now. Nice, there's Finn and Ray. Nice stained glass look. And nice Ad Ad Walker on the planet of Hoth. And that's that for box two. So nice, you got this uh, another stained glass thingy right there. Resistance patch over here. Ahsoka Tano from the uh, animated series right here, which is very good. And old John D. Brannon. Everyone remembers John D. Brannon. Which one, Kip? Sorry. Which one are you talking about? Oh. Oh, is that that is the Rogue One story? Did many Bothans die in the Rogue One story? Oh wait, really? Hold on. I thought, yeah, I think I think the Bothans died for the second set of plans. The Rogue One movie is about the first Death Star, so the Rogue One should be the bridge between should be the bridge between M, uh, between Episode Three and um, and Episode Four, New Hope. 
to my under yeah, to my understanding, that's what it is. I think many Bothans die, yeah, uh, and many Bothans die in the uh, in the second set of plans in between Empire and and Jedi. So the Rogue One movie that's coming out here will be the the bridge between Revenge of the Sith and A New Hope. I'm excited to see Rogue One. I know, spoiler alert, right? It's like, no, don't tell me that many Bothans have died already. You just watch the entire movie. When Rogue, when, when Rogue One Part 2 comes out, I, there's not going to be a Bothans movie. Poor Bothans. That, that, that's just that. The Bothans are the underrepresented creatures, the un underrepresented species of the entire Star Wars universe. That's the thing. Many Bothans die. They never get, they never get the credit. Oh, it's, it's Han Solo. It's, uh, you know, it's Lando Calrissian. They're the ones that, you know, blew, blew up the Death Star. It's Luke Skywalker, you know, but... But poor Bothans never get their due. And they probably never will. Bothans' lives matter, I think. Poor Bothans. Many of them die. Zero credit. Zero credit for the second destruction of the, of the Death Star. You know? That's just, that's just Lucas and J.J. Abrams just going out there and human-washing history. That's what they're doing. They're just human-washing history. And not giving, uh, or Jedi washing the history of the Star Wars universe, and not giving uh, the Bothans any credit. Poor Bothans. No one wants a Bothans movie. No one wants Star Wars Bothans. I think there's something wrong with that in this world. <laughs> Curtis is like, what does a Bothan even look like? I don't know, but we're going to look that up after this. It's like, what does a Bothan look like? There's Darth Vader's lightsaber. There's a TIE fighter. And, oh, nice. Look at that. That's a sketch card, Curtis. Nice. Featuring art by Scott Jones. I was thinking about what Deuce X the other day. What what, what was I talking about the other day? I've for, I've forgotten. There's been I don't know. Short term memory fails with uh, with alcoholism, Curtis. Oh, with Poe Dameron and Alicia Vikander. No, it was a uh, it was Ex Machina, wasn't it? I think I I think I remember again. It was Ex Machina, not Deuce X, or Du X. Ex Machina, great movie, folks. If you want to see Poe Dameron from The Force Awakens and the easy on the eyes Alicia Vikander. Gold? Yeah, there you go. 42 out of 50, Luke Skywalker gold. Great movie, though, Ex Machina. If you're into, uh, if you're into movies about artificial intelligence and, and uh, their impact on the future... First order patch. Nice. Stormtroopers. All right. So I think the sketch card is solid. And I think that should be it, unless we find some other low numbered cards here. Kurt is saying, you only hit one gold in the four boxes prior. So are those are these gold cards not, not common? I guess you got lucky. I think the rest of these just, I believe, are base cards. And some blue parallels, which are not numbered. And that is, and there's Luke's Landspeeder. 
And that is that, folks. So, Curtis, thanks very much for grabbing a, uh, a few personal boxes of Star Wars Evolution. Really appreciate you getting into that action on jazbeeshobbyland.com, where not only do we do sports, but clearly I'm a Star Wars nerd as well. So we can, we can do that. Thanks a lot, Curtis. We'll see you next time.